Hello, I'm Jeremy and thank you all for joining us here on the Weekly Observation of Superheroes. Today we're going to start with one of our top stories. We have received information that former X-Men Storm has recently come to contact with hero and renowned genius Adam Brashear. Our sources suggest that this may be a, an attempt to resurrect Max Eisenhardt, the mutant known as Magneto. Reminder that Magneto gave his life in the fight against Uranus. In an attempt to resurrect Magneto, it appears that Storm used one of Brashear's portal rooms. This led her to an area in the afterlife made specifically for mutants known as the Waiting Room. Apparently, Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch, created this space. Upon arriving, Storm runs into Tarn the Uncaring, a mutant who died facing Magneto in combat. After finding out the former Queen of Wakanda's motives for being in the waiting room, tensions begin to rise and violence ensues. Forewarning, some of these images we're about to show are graphic, and we recommend that some viewers look away. As the genomic mage swells to gigantic proportions, claiming that all mutants are his canvas and that he plans to return to the living and make them in his image, Aurora stands, uh, uh flies, floats, uh, in the midst of Tarn's threats, the goddess reminds him that she is a witch of the weather, named for the storm, and he is standing on a cloud. Wow. Incredible. This story is still developing, but we'll keep you updated as we learn more. We'd like to thank Al Ewing, Luciano Vecchio, and Stefano Caselli for this amazing story. In other news, and in another future timeline, Captain America is suiting up. And just wait until you find out what he's going up against this time. Steve Rogers is far from the Captain America we know and love. He's retired. He lives with, we assume, his wife Rosa. He takes walks to the park to talk to his friends Luke Cage and Matt Murdock. Things are good. Or so they seem. The newly passed Watcher Act, which involves a lot of surveillance and control, is having a negative effect. And along with the terror curfews, things are not as pleasant as they appear to be. On top of that, the three-part docuseries titled Red Between the Lines plans to dive deep into the story of the Red Skull, claiming the recent evidence has surfaced that shows him actually working against Hitler, planning to take the Third Reich down from within. This docuseries also plans to cover the men that came after Red Skull to further twist his story. Rogers is interviewed on the Evening Live News to discuss his thoughts on the docuseries. He's joined by James Stark, the son of Iron Man and Wasp, and CEO of Stark Enterprises. Things become heated when James accuses Rogers of trying to shut down free speech, claiming he's speaking out against the series to protect his own legacy. As Rogers tries to defend himself, James continues by bringing up Hero Day, a day described as a day of reckoning for the superhero community, leaving many dead. Steve explains that it was Ultron that caused this travesty and took control of the Hulk. James fires back that the evil AI was the creation of Hank Pym, asking how are people supposed to not question these so-called heroes? How are we supposed to believe you about the Red Skull? After a few remarks, and deciding not to let them tear at old wounds for the sake of ratings, Rogers storms off. His emotions run high. He works to calm himself down, reminding himself he doesn't have the super soldier serum anymore. As curfew is starting to be enforced, he sees a group of kids being harassed. Doing the only thing he knows how, he steps in. After a nice back and forth with the police officers, they eventually overtake him and suddenly, he's saved. He arrives at an undercover hideout with a team led by Luke Cage. Luke explains the situation. Matt has been killed. The new Avengers are laying waste to countries overseas. Luke asks Steve to join his cause to spread the truth about the corrupt system that has overtaken the country. Steve responds that he couldn't even protect the kids being harassed. That's when Luke unveils that his team were able to replicate the Super Soldier Serum. This is sensational, and we'll keep you updated as we learn more. And as always, thank you to Chip Zadarki and Daniel Acuna for bringing us this story. That's all we have today. Thank you all so much for joining us here on the Weekly Observation of Superheroes. I'm Jeremy. See you next time.